exact opposite. God's coming back in a city he knew because it started in a garden, garden, and then it all the way goes to a city. And we shouldn't just tolerate the city. We need to love the city because God loves the city. There's people in the city. The people close in the city. There's proximity. There's a density. And so it is critical, I believe, to, to, to love the city. It's not just optional. Because God loves the city. But God wants us to rip through the barriers, get close to people, and just love and get into the mess of it all. Why? We've already been defined by Jesus Christ. Uh, here's how City Life views our story in this. God made everything and he saw it was very what? Good. There's a destiny in all of us. Good morning, City Life. How's everyone doing this morning? Good morning, good morning. We're going to go ahead and worship, so if you want to stand, those that are joining us online, welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. Let's worship the King.
victory. Jesus our victory. Jesus our victory. Jesus and we win and we win. Him and God is fighting for us. We win. He gave His only Son up for us. We win. Yeah, we win. Jesus our victory. Verses 1 through 8, and it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of, Her of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me, and he set me free. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in man.
and we give you our praise. You're holy, you're worthy, you're faithful. We give you our praise. You're holy, you're worthy. You're sing it out. You're holy.
Jesus, we give you the highest praise. When we sing hallelujah, we are giving you our highest praise, God, because that is what you deserve. We thank you, God, for everything that you've done in us, God, and through us. Lord, we trust you. When I was afraid you were with me, we can hold on to that. Know that you are with us, God. We love you and we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and take the next few seconds, say hello to someone, and we'll be back. Come on, let's make some noise again for Jesus. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, so glad to see you all this morning. My name is Rob. I serve here on the Dream Team. So excited to be here today with you. Today's a special, special day. Uh, we got some baptisms and child dedication here coming up in the next service. But we're just so glad that you are here today. If it's your first time here, we want to encourage you to get connected here. Uh, if you came in, there's a Connect card. We want to ask you to fill that out. Um, put some information, read it, check it out. The goal is this. We don't want to have you leave here doing life alone. That makes sense? We don't want you alone. <clears throat> All right. We're going to transition to the giving portion of our service today. I'm going to read a scripture, Matthew 6, 25 through 33. I love that the top of this says the cure for anxiety. I think this is beautiful. Therefore, I tell you, this is, this is Jesus, these words are in red. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or, what you're, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. All right, here's the cheat code. I don't play video games, but my kids have been teaching me about cheat code. It's this verse right here for life. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. I want to read that again. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added or provided for you. This is probably the most life-changing verse for me personally when it comes to trusting God and just letting go, when it comes to finances, when it comes to life, and what am I going to do, and what's my purpose, and, and you know, I don't, want to, I don't want to miss out, I don't want to make mistakes, or I don't want to miss my moment. It's that verse. If I just keep my eyes fixed on Jesus... He's got us, and that's been life-changing for me, and, and as we give and as we're generous today, let's have that in mind, that we would seek God first and give to God first and trust him to know that he's got us. We might give a little, we might give a lot. It doesn't matter. It's about trusting God and being faithful and consistent with our giving, and as we trust him, we'll know that he's going to take care of us. He's got us, and uh, he's a good God. Amen? Amen. All right, ways to give. Uh, you're familiar with this here. We got citylifelancing.com. You can text any amount to 84321. Church Center app, cash card or check, you can put in the bucket as I pass by here in a moment. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. Father, we thank you that you love us. God, we want to seek you first in everything that we do. Jesus, thank you for loving us, God. Thank you for showing us this truth, that God, that you are everything that we need. God, we love you, we give you 
this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everybody. My name's Jerome, and I get to serve as lead pastor here, and welcome to those in the room and those tuning in online. Today is going to be a bit of a bridge. We're going to travel from one season and entering another season, but we won't enter that season because we're going to be on the bridge today. And when it comes to God, Jesus is the mediator, so a bridge wouldn't be a perfect example for him because we don't drive on him. We lay down our life for him to be transformed and born again as he permeates our whole being and he has full control and he rose from the dead and anyone who puts their faith in him and repents from their sin is connected back with the father to be one with God and that's what we mean when we say victory. So we'll talk about what we've been doing and what we're going to do. We will take communion today and then at the end of service, so grateful for the worship team. Um, because there's certain things that no word can suffice for a moment. And magnifying God through song ministers to my soul so deeply. So I'm grateful for the time we've carved out in this gathering already. But hopefully, Lord willing, we'll have time to carve out again at the end. Well, speaking of bridges, we recently went up to the UP. It's my first time ever being past Mackinac, and on that bridge, long, a few miles, uh, holding, gripping, 10 and 2, and locked in, and uh, we made it across. I'm here back to report. Um, but we, we're in a season shift here at City Life. We've been spending three months in a series called B. Last week, we talked about how the internship, and with us even entering spring, but the internship is four quarters, so our church thematically will be also in that same content. We will be drinking from that well as well. So we talked about not only do, are we beloved that are being loved by God, but we're loved to love, so go do love. And if you missed last week's message, you can go back into. The kids thought it was really cool. They didn't know this, but they said this week, you have a podcast? I go, yes. What do you mean? You have a podcast? I said, yes. I'm on the City Life podcast. It's not my podcast, but yes. And pulled it up, and they thought it was the neatest thing in the world. So you might not have known that because the kids didn't know that. We have a podcast. So you can go back and listen to the messages on YouTube under the live section or on the podcast. So today we're going to equip you at the beginning here with life is fast. How do you calibrate in the moment? We've created a tool here called the spiritual health kit. And the spiritual health kit could be, you can take, uh, just to use eggs, if you're a vegetarian, this, you, you travel with me for a moment, you can use a vegan version of your breakfast. But when I cook eggs, I can cook them really slow or I can cook them really fast. So you can do the spiritual health kit in minutes or even hours or the whole day. But in the spirit of the due quarter, spring, here we are moving forward into June, you might not always have hours before you get to work. So on our website under resources is spiritual health kit. And today we'll do a condensed version that we 
ran through this exercise as a team of what this could look like, and we do this as a family as well. So right off the bat is remembering who you are, is whose you are, as beloved children of God. So this is not above scripture, but it's a mantra to remember scripture of who you are to calibrate your soul in the day and in the morning. So this is online under identity, and it's a fill in the blank. You can customize accordingly. You can put green pepper in your eggs, or you don't have to. Uh, We had this discussion yesterday. One kid loves it because of texture. The other person didn't like it because of texture. And so now maybe we'll do a bullpen strategy with eggs. So by all means, cook accordingly, church. I am a beloved son of God. I want you to think first person in your own mind. I am brand new in Jesus. If you're not in Jesus, today's a great day. Second service is going to be baptisms and child dedication. Today's your day. Repent, turn from your sin, believe, confess, and follow Jesus all the days of your life as a disciple. I am a chosen masterpiece of God. I am Jerome, my name means sacred. I am sacred Jerome. I'm created to do good works that God has prepared for me. I humble myself before you, God. Now, if you're single, you would say or believe or kind of cook accordingly as your own is I'm married to Christ and am one with him. In my case, Crystal and I are one and we move at her pace. I am one with Crystal. Our kids are made by God, and they will serve the Lord to speak that over their life. How we customize that sentence is, our kids are our land, and we tend to it. Taste and see. They will do more than we dream. Every person in this room and every person tuned in, I have purpose or mission to serve in everything I do. I look forward to my forever home. And I won't stop until Jesus returns and makes all things new. We're doing the spiritual health kit. We do that real quick. You might just remember that moment if you're sitting down. And we're going to calibrate before we're going to go on a job site. We have a couple minutes in the car. And then we're going to pull up the Bible app together. The Bible app together today, there's a verse of the day. We watch a little video and then we'll do the prayer. The verse of the day is this. In the Bible app, if you've not downloaded it, the YouVersion Bible app is great for a touch point, and then you can dive deeper along the way. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You are from God, little children, and you have conquered them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. And here's a little video about this verse. 1 John 4, 4 says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, Because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I'm Ashley Elliott. I'm an author and a counselor, but my most important role is as a child of God. Now, if you've accepted Christ into your life, then you too are a child of God. And God himself lives inside of you. The one who is in you is greater, that's God, than the one who is in the world. And who is in the world? The enemy. Well, wait a minute. We live in the world. So we live in the world with the enemy. That's complex. But God reminds us that he lives inside of us and he is greater than anything that we'll ever face in this world, whether temptation or frustration or really amazing days. When I feel stressed out, I tend to get overwhelmed by my inadequacy to get everything done. And as I remember that I am a child of God, and that's the most important role, and remember that God in me is greater than anything that I'll face, I can set back and breathe a little easier. God is greater than any temptation that you'll ever face. God is greater than loneliness, depression, and rage. God is greater than any good thing or bad thing that we'll ever face. And so let's commit this verse to our hearts. I challenge you to memorize it, to burn it on your heart so that when you face a negative space, that you can call on God and remember that greater is he who is in you than who is in the world. On the story, you just tap and it goes to the 
next part of the sequence, and there's a few more reflective points you can do, but to capture today's version of it, the next one we hit is prayer, and we can pray this together. I'll read it, and you can pray along with me. God, thank you for your strength in me because of your work in my life. I am not defeated by the darkness in the world around me. Help me to remember that you overcame he who is in the world. You live in me, which means I can share in your victory. By the way, this is today's. The Holy Spirit is always alive and active in every single moment in our life. Help me remember this and hold on to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, to move, if we're in the car, we're getting ready to travel, and maybe we're going over the Mackinac Bridge together, and we're doing this exercise. We would practice an attitude of gratitude in one way to understand there's connective tissue from yesterday's day to today and even tomorrow, but, but yesterday to today is three things we're thankful for yesterday and three things we're thankful for today. So in your mind, think through three things you're thankful for yesterday. And for people that are overcomplicating this, yes, you can pick the sunshine. And then think through the three things you're thankful for today. Yesterday I was thankful for hoops outside, the sunshine, and coffee. Today I'm thankful for a drink I drank this morning on the way in, a baptism day, and later we're going to hang out and watch some TV, Lord willing, as a family. Now that postures our heart, then as we go about into any setting, we go and we wonder why uh, we're carrying a spirit of busyness into what we do, and the goal is not to just go do stuff, get stuff done, but to remember that we're loved and have a Sabbath pace along the way. So there's your spiritual health kit to equip us uh, into our day-to-day. So the goal there would be that you could think through, go online, and start to continue to do that, to be on the offense. The gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus said, I will build my church. Jesus, he teaches us through his word to put on the full armor of God. And that is on the offense. And there's nothing on the back of us. Why? Because we get each other's backs and God has called us to, in his name, push down the gates, be light and salt anywhere we go. Gates are not an offensive weapon. Now, though fear, worries, temptations, they do come, greater is he that lives in me. All right, that's individual for you and yourself. Corporately here, us, the speed of we, what has been done in this season, I think deserves dashboard space in our life if we're gonna remember where we're going at the end of April and Lord willing, May, June, and beyond. Easter just happened here, a legendary day. This is a recap from two weeks ago.
most recent thing which, which has been done here is Easter Sunday, and remembrance for all of us is that it's still finished, it's still done because Jesus finished, he paid the ultimate price for all of us. It is finished. It's done so that we can go do. So what are some things that we're going to do to get on your radar? Information is appreciation. At some level, we hope to inspire, but we're hoping to do in this section right here is what we're going to do is for us to calibrate on our calendar, riding along today on this bridge of where we're going to go, where we would prioritize not only the gathering on Sunday, but us growing together in groups and gathering in a smaller setting, and then going to go love the city. So in the next couple weeks, we are going to begin the journey of a season in the book of Acts. Next week will be the overview of Acts. And the gospel of Luke shows us what Jesus began to do. The book of Acts is recorded for what Jesus continues to do. Not only for the church then, but also would inspire us now. You. Now, there's, of course, descriptive, and not all of it is prescriptive, but on the 28th, so next week will be the overview, and then on the 28th, we're going to begin the book of Acts, which is also then going to be the beginning of the next semester for groups. So with the book of Acts, you'll be able to follow on the story, you'll be able to sign up on MailChimp and get our email, and through those communication sources, there will be a chapter a day. And then on Sundays, we'll be teaching around the section of where the chapter falls. So through 28 days, we're going to allow our group session to be the bulk of it in the book of Acts. Well, here's Kendall here giving us information about groups. Check it out. Hey, Kendall here. Our second semester of groups is launching April 28th. That's right. Discipleship groups are back. We will be growing together in God as disciples and in relationships. We will have many groups for you to choose from that meet throughout the week. So find one that fits best with your schedule and sign up today through the Church Center app or our website. You belong here. Groups. Come on, somebody. Let's... Now, the reason we're carving out a portion during today's gathering is to get it on our radar so we can prioritize it. And we know that as people, we need to hear something a lot to remember. Seven times is probably 49, seven times seven at this stage in the game because of the amount of information that is out there in the world always trying to grab our attention. So here we are carving out this space today so that we can think ahead, be on the offense and start to prioritize if God is inviting you to be a part of groups this season. The invitation is there. You can go to the website or after service, talk to somebody further in the Connect, and also in the weeks ahead, uh, you'll hear about the groups and what is taking place there. And then as we move into the summer, the Love the City serving menu is almost ready. So that's talking block parties, ice cream going out, to love the city week, and then that all then culminates right into the cadence of serving in the schools. And when we say serving in the schools, there's a priority here as a team that we're serving in the Lansing Public Schools. We're the only church in town that I know of that rents from the Lansing Public Schools as we lease this space. And so we want to continue to steward that relationship and be present where life exists, but don't get it twisted. Our heartbeat for schools is public, private, and all in between, home, you name it. So we would long to see God's people serving everywhere. But that commitment, because you can only do one thing at a time uh, if you want to do something well, and we want to continue to steward our involvement in the schools with Love the City Schools, Love the Schools, and that is going to be in the fall. So you'll get the menu of what takes place this summer, and you can pick one, uh, and we're just here to serve, which the block parties, the ice cream truck that goes out and lets people taste and see and let the no Lord uh, let them know that the Lord is good. And then they love the city week with the new date that it will be right on your radar and, um, and then tying into the school. So be on the lookout for that, which is going to lead to there will be a member huddle. We would love for you to be a member, to commit, 
to what God is doing through this family, through this local church. We're a part of the church everywhere, but incarnate proximity, frequency leads to intimacy. And as we continue to be close, often God is gonna grow in shape because not all, God has messages for the world, but he has unique messages for this body right here. And not all things overlap. That means you can't always just watch a sermon online and it's gonna apply to the Lansing, the 517 in the world. So we wanna continue to be faithful in this space of where God is taking us. So we're gonna have a member huddle in June. And for the calendar buffs, we penciled it in. It is subject to change. Stay agile. Uh, the term of the pandemic was, uh, there was probably a, a several different terms that could be, or words that could have been used, but one was pivot. So we want to remember that we can pivot, but the date is June 11th, member huddle. It will be a, a June Zoom on a Wednesday that you'll hear what's coming up, more behind the scenes, questions that you can ask, and we would love to have you become a member. You might say, how can I become a member? I'm glad you asked. Online, there's a link, and then also at the Connect Center or the Connect Card, and then you will get into the workflow, and somebody will call you, and you can be a part of what God is doing here. We call the membership uh, the dream team, because it's God's dream that we would be a part of his team, a family, on mission, to serve as we're loved, the one. So that's some of the things that we are going to do, and the church said, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to take communion today. And to tee this up, Jesus, in John chapter 17, prays for us. It's known as the high priestly prayer. And if you're a believer in this place today, we invite you in a moment, we're going to take communion. And the buckets will pass from the team here. And they'll be passing those, and for the believers, grab a small little juice wafer cup, and I'll lead us after this video. And we're going to read a passage out of 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. But to get us there, there's several pastors in the area. We recorded a section of the high priestly prayer in John 17, because communion is about being one with God to commune with God because of Jesus, one table, but also that we would be one with each other. And through one person, Jesus, his body, his blood that was shed, and the oneness with the Father, the Spirit, and himself, it's even possible for us to be one with God and one with each other. The beginning of the song, great brother in the Lord, Michael Maher, sent me a clip, and I got the voice memo, and it had a a prayer tone, like a groaning, and it felt like a continuation of the high priestly prayer that would be one, and I said, we're working on a project called One, and I think this would be a, a very fitting way to end the project if you would allow us to use the song. He said, it's yours. Well, it was a great collaborative effort of oneness where he flew out, he lives in Kansas City, and got to sing here on a Sunday, but he recorded the the verse, and then we recorded different verses, and the first verse, just praying for what's going on in the world, the tension, and that we could only be one as the Father and the Son are one. So oneness is found in him. To commune with God is found in Jesus and to have community. And then there's a celebratory kind of flavor, not a kind of. It's a celebratory ending on purpose with several churches in the space as we're all singing that we're one in the spirit. And one day there will be no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death. And we're going to be worshiping one around the throne. So this will lead us into communion. You guys can pass the communion um, out during this and just take one for the believers and enjoy and also kind of pray through this song. I pray the Holy Spirit would lead us and we'd pick up things that we don't hear 
what he's speaking through this song. I pray not only for these, but also for those who believe in me through their word. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory you have given me so that they may be one as we, as we, as we, as we, as we, as we are one.
1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, since all of us share the one bread. 1 Corinthians eleven seventeen. Now, in giving this instruction, I do not praise you since you come together not for the better but for the worse. There's a critique going on for the church in Corinth. For to begin with, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. Indeed, it is necessary that there be factions among you so that those who are approved may be recognized among you. And when you come together, then, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For at the meal, each one eats his own supper. So one person is hungry while another gets drunk. Don't you have homes in which to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I praise you? I do not praise you in this matter. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sin against the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself. In this way, let him eat the bread and drink from the cup. For whoever eats and drinks without recognizing the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are sick and ill among you, and many have fallen asleep. If we were properly judging ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, welcome one another. It would be a mockery to come together to a table of believers to forget how we've been brought to that table. It's only been possible because of Jesus, and we remember his body that was broken, his blood that was shed, that gave us a seat at the table that allowed us to go across the bridge. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, to let go, repent, turn, say, God, I want to be one with you. And I recognize that's only possible by Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. And in him, you can be one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Spirit, three in one. And then we can be the body to invite others to the table that are in Jesus to make room, to not quarrel against one another, to have divisions against one another, but to remember the grace that saved us is saving us and that doesn't mean that there's not correction with one another. It just means we're always calibrated to remember we've been bought by the life of Christ, the real bread of life. So today, we pull off the little cellophane, and this wafer we take out. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then pulling back the tinfoil. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. That means every time at home or wherever we're eating, you can have communion. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This cup is the new covenant. 
in Jesus' blood. Well, to end today, I'm not going to read the passage, but I'm going to paraphrase. What's been on my heart before we leave this place, we wanted to talk about what, we're, what we've done, what we're going to do, take communion, get ready for the next service for baptism and child dedication. And if you are here today and Jesus has transformed your life and you've turned from your sin and you've repented even in this moment or watching, the team is prepared for you to be baptized today. There's a change of clothes. And Jesus died publicly for you. Will you prob- publicly proclaim that you no longer live a life dead in sin, but you're alive in victory? And thanks be to Christ Jesus. So you can do that at the next service at 1130. But what was on my heart to close in this space for us today, and if there would have been a message that was for the st- the time to preach today would have been found in Romans chapter 8. You can read this later. Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 37. And it speaks of the contrast of even suffering in this world, but yet the glory one day that will be revealed to us. And that our spirit groans in such a way that we cry out to God. And I don't know who here is in a battle or in a storm, but it might be hard to even consider the idea that there's victory in Christ. But as we worship and as we close, if you're here today and you are either facing a battle or someone you know is facing a battle and there's a groaning that you don't even have words to pray for, As we close in worship, I believe with an act of surrender to just say, God, meet me where I'm at, meet my friends, meet my family where I'm at and where they're at. We need victory that's only found in you, victory to be, to even have a a picture past this life. If you're here today and you're in a battle and that's you, I want to know who we're praying for and I also want to invite you in that I believe as we worship to close. God hears your prayers and the groanings of your heart. If that's you, will you just raise your hand? You're like, I'm in a battle today. And for the record, my hand's raised. That's why worship ministered to me. There's groanings in my life and in my heart. There's a battle that people are facing, some in this room that I know are facing. And God, we wave our hand to you. One, this is a hand that you've given us to praise you, but we also lift it to pray. God, we lift this hand to say that we can't do it. There's groanings in our spirit that we need the victory of heaven. And in this moment right here, right now, God, we speak Jesus over every situation. Jesus over every lie. Jesus over every sickness. Jesus over every doubt. Jesus over every insecurity. We ask for freedom to sweep over this place freedom that can't be found in head thought alone but has to impact our hearts right here right now and may the groanings of your people be met with the praise beyond this planet ever of all time so we get to sing and i imagine you're there so the pass for the trash is that what that is so they'll be passing the buckets for the trash but god saw all of our hands and i want to invite you to sing i want to invite you to worship Because for the next nine minutes, we're just going to give that all to God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he's going to meet each one of us right here, right now. Amen. Freedom.
No justice, anxiety, shame. But there is no one who comes to save Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There's fear, oppression, and pain. No justice, anxiety, shame. But there is the one who comes to save Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. is such a holy moment and I want to pause for a second as we go into this can we fathom walking into the throne room of God we will be so we won't be able to think about one struggle or groaning that's going on we're going to be so captivated by the glory we're going to be overwhelmed if you've ever tasted any moment on this planet of goodness or a high that can't sustain or just some moment of bliss Oh, this will be unthinkable. The way we're going to worship forever and all eternity. The one who is holy and above it all. So come on, church. He is holy, he's worthy, and he's faithful. Let's go. We give you our praise. You're holy. You're worthy.
You're holy, you're worthy, you're faithful, and we give you our praise. You're holy, you're worthy, you're faithful, and we give you our praise. You're holy, you're worthy, you're faithful, and we give you our praise. You're holy, you're worthy. God, thank you for every person in this room and every person that's in their life, every person, person who's tuned in. God, you love us more than we can fathom. And we thank you for the opportunity to look past the groanings and the suffering and even the battles of this world and lift up the one who is above it all. And we pray that this perspective shift as we end it today, that you are holy, you are worthy, and you are faithful is medicine for our soul. God, as we go out of this place, I pray that if it's a minute before a meeting or if it's an hour that we would connect with you and if the tool of the spiritual health kit is helpful, amen. If the Bible app's helpful, amen. But let the main thing be the main thing, that we can be one with you to go flow, to be one with each other. And oneness is only found in your son. And we thank you. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Got to pray a grace and endurance. And even in this moment, new vision. Where there's been clouds, God, I pray that there would be clarity. There would be a freedom. Over every scheme of the evil one. That we would have eyes to see and ears to hear what you're doing. And we thank you for today. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Come on. Well, you're more than welcome to stay. And if you're tuning in, you got 20 minutes to get here for the 1130 service. And at the beginning will be worship. So you'll have time if you want to come and be baptized. Today's your day because that will take place about the middle of service. Acts is right around the corner. What Jesus continues to do through the church then and what he continues to do through the church now through you. Looking forward to the season ahead because God's going to keep moving. So we'll see you next week, 10 a.m. and 11.30. All races, all faces, and all ages, you belong here. We're going to keep loving this city one life at a time. And we're not going to stop until Jesus returns and he makes all things new. Have the best day of your lives. <laughs>